I should ask, actually, before we begin, uh, could I get a show of hands for who is, who is a Wikimedian here, or actually, who is not a Wikimedian normally in there? Identifies as a Wikimedian. Okay, a couple. And for those that are Wikimedians, do you come from a wiki project, Wikipedia most likely, that uses fair use currently? That's, if it's English Wikipedia, that's you. <laughs> and do you come from a wiki project that does not allow fair use? There's a couple. <laughs> Commons, right. <laughs> okay, good. And there was another... Uh, not, not necessarily the views of the... Um, Sorry? Not necessarily a baseline, the views. to get a baseline. Ah, yes, of course. Uh, given the question at hand, before we hear from the combatants, <laughs> what are your initial thoughts on the answer on the question that all Wikipedias and Wikimedia projects should, or Wikipedias, should allow fair use or none of them, uh, before we hear any debates, what are your initial votes? And we'll do it again afterwards. So all? Ooh. All Wikipedias should allow fair use. No Wikipedias should allow fair use. <laughs> That's precisely the point. So uh, for people who might not be familiar with formal debates, the idea is that you have a intentionally provocative question. Uh, <laughs> this is not a situation where the panelists are representing their personal points of view or even their organization's points of view necessarily, although they might overlap in some cases. And in many formal debates, you will actually be given presenters who are actively saying things they disagree with. It's just for the sake of the argument. Okay, maybe they can pick you. But, but his point is it's supposed to be. That's how you do a debate. You have a misguided question. Currently, all Wikipedias get to choose on a bilocal consensus. Commons does not, and individual Wikipedias do. Yeah, so can someone turn on my mic here? Um, <laughs> no, really. You're a disruptive technology. Well, yeah, I will speak loudly then. So, you know, I think it's very unfortunate that this has been named kind of incorrectly. At least because the question of including these materials on Wikipedia is not a question of fair use at all. The foundation exists to create educational resources. Are you reading this? Yes. Freely available for any purpose, not just for the narrow purposes that we use in the projects. And so the projects have rules about what non-free materials they'll accept, which go far beyond what the local thing. purposes are, just because we want to achieve that end goal of making things freely available. And so different projects try to achieve different ends. Commons makes a free media repository, the Wikipedia is making an encyclopedia. And for those different ends, the trade-off between what non free how about we listen to the debate first? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I think this is unwelcome. And unwelcome. I agree with this guy. So, we can have that debate. I think that we really have the fair use policy on English Wikipedia years ago to avoid this specific confusion. And I think it's unfortunate to keep repeating it in the public domain. Mm -hmm. Perhaps those issues are things that the for and against parties can use against or for their particular points of view. To that end, I will introduce the various uh, participants. For the all team, we have, for both teams, we have a visiting expert and a Wikimedian. So for the all team and presenting first, we have Brandon Butler, the Director of Public Policy Initiatives at the Association of Research Libraries, who will be followed by our visiting expert, Jessica Coates, from uh, the Creative Commons International Office. She is the uh, affiliate network coordinator there, who will be followed by the Wikimedian responding for the all team, uh, Stephen Laporte, user S. Laporte, who is now a uh, attorney, is the official role, at the Wikimedia Foundation, although he will not be representing the Wikimedia Foundation. <laughs> followed finally by uh, Lennart Gulbrandsson from Wikimedia Sweden, the former president of the Swedish chapter. So, Brandon.
Hi, everybody. Um, so thank you very much for having me. Uh, and these are these these actually are my views. I'm not I'm not pretending to like fair use. I like it quite a lot. Um, and I work with libraries in my day job who also are big fans of fair use, so I don't think I'm speaking against any of my interests. But thank you all for having me. Um, and actually, that little intervention was helpful because it, it, it brings up uh, something that I think is a core point that, that I think is worth debating here, which is should a fair user uh, worry about what other folks are going to do with their material once they've published it, or should they be concerned primarily with whether their own use is legitimate. And I feel strongly that the latter is the case. That is, when you are engaged in a fair use, uh, your use is fair and legitimate, and it is uh, culturally valuable and legitimate and important. And what other folks do is other folks' problem and other folks' concern. And that's the way the law is written here in the US. And I think that's a very good arrangement, because it allows organizations like Wikipedia uh, to thrive and to take the fullest advantage of their rights without having a kind of heckler's veto from whatever bad actors might be out there on the web uh, crawling your site and stealing your stuff and using it in ways that you don't like. Um, so I'll that, let that be my response to that intervention. Um, but let me get to my main, uh, my main uh, 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 presentation. So the bottom line here is that if Wikipedia doesn't need fair use and wouldn't benefit from fair use and wouldn't benefit from fair use on an international kind of in principle basis, then what was all that SOPA stuff about, right? I mean, you guys stopped, uh, I'd, I'd say you were the sort of sine qua non of why SOPA stopped, right? Had Wikipedia not blacked out, things might have gone quite differently. Um, and SOPA is all about, is not about, obviously it couldn't be about using content that's free, right? It's about the kinds of challenges that could come from rights holders for using their content, right? If, you're, if, you're, if you are only using freely available content, uh, then you can just sort of ignore copyright policy and go about your merry way. Uh, and I don't think that that's what Wikipedia wants to do. Uh, it might be sort of nice and convenient, and a lot of lawyers might maybe could be repurposed in other places. Um, but I don't think that that's a principled stand that Wikipedia wants to make. I think Wikipedians are not content to live in, a, in that kind of self-contained ecosystem. I think you know that you are talking about the whole world. The, the Wikipedia ecosystem is meant to comprehend and to discuss all culture and all content, and that to do that, uh, you cannot then sort of have this self-limiting principle that you'll refuse to talk about content that is copyright encumbered. So the first thing generally, so that's my sort of bottom line. Let me say three things. First, fair use is a good thing generally. It is a good thing, and, and we should promote that good thing as far and wide as possible. Second, fair use is especially well suited to Wikipedia. That is, Wikipedia, uh, the way that it operates, will be very well placed to make fair use arguments about the uses that it makes. Um, and as I mentioned in the US, need not worry about the uses others make. And third, that defending fair use and exporting fair use values to other countries is a worthy and important policy goal for the Wikipedia community. So first, fair use is a good thing generally. And let me just say, although I'm sure that, I mean, this is a very smart crowd. I'm sure you guys have a basic idea, but right, what is fair use? It is the unlicensed, unauthorized use of copyright, copyrighted works um, for uh, legitimate purposes such as criticism, commentary, scholarship, and other transformative purposes, right? It's a use that would ordinarily have to be, uh, uh, you'd have to ask permission or pay someone, but because your use is of the right kind, it is favored by the law, and you don't have to ask anyone or pay anything. Such uses benefit society. Uh, they benefit society generally a great deal, and courts balance that benefit against the potential harm of uh, the copyright owner. And in cases where courts find fair use, they find that the benefits to society at large outweigh the potential harm to the market, uh, to the market for the rights holder. Uh, courts have recognized that fair use is a protection for a fundamental human right of free expression. Now that right is expressed in the U.S. by the First Amendment. And so the Supreme Court has said in, uh, in at least two cases that fair use is uh, one of the built-in protections for, for free expression that uh, were they not a part of the copyright system, copyright would violate the First Amendment, would be an abridgment of free expression because copyright would allow private censorship, right? I could not talk about uh, copyright encumbered culture without asking permission of the author. 
and the Constitution would not tolerate that. And I think universal principles of human rights can't tolerate that. Some kind of pressure valve to allow for commentary and discussion and follow on creation of culture is a kind of universal value that we should defend. Um, fair use has been hugely successful in this country in incentivizing innovation and creativity. Uh, Google is the best example, right? Google is sort of a, a, a fantastic uh, resource that could not exist without fair use. Google just copies the whole web all the time, every day, never asks anybody permission, and has been exonerated under the fair use doctrine in the courts because what they do uh, is a fair use. It is transformative. They're not standing in anyone's shoes and trying to usurp their market. They are creating new value. It is an open-ended and flexible doctrine. So I know that in many places the, uh, the law tends to favor discrete exceptions that are very narrowly tailored and defined. But of course, those exceptions have to be constantly updated and constantly added to in order to accommodate new uses, which in the kind of community that you guys are in, which is constantly evolving, which is collaborative, which is based on emerging technologies, that is not a model of lawmaking and policy making that I think you guys need to get on board with. I think fair use, rather, is the kind of flexible policy device that you need to enable what you do. So that brings me to my second point. Fair use is especially well suited to Wikipedia. Uh, Wikipedians are engaged in a form of scholarship and education. What you do is at the heart of the fair use doctrine. So under the first, uh, the first of the four prongs of the fair use uh, statute, purpose and character of the use, you guys would win every time, right? Just like Georgia State did in the fair use case, uh, in their fair use dispute. You have an overarching purpose that will win you the first prong al every time, almost every time. So you have a kind of broad uh, baseline to go from. Uh, you use media to illustrate informative, nonprofit educational works. Again, so you're going to be doing something transformative, which is another core concept in the fair use doctrine. Uh, that has really emerged over the last 20 or 30 years to make fair use comprehensible and usable. What you do is adding value. What you do is new and different than what the original uh, creator was up to. It is uh, this idea that uh, fair use is unpredictable uh, is, is a kind of outdated canard. Uh, you can predict how your fair use case is going to turn out. Um, especially, again, when you are really at the core of fair use. I think it, it would be a, a shame for a Wikipedia of all, of all places to be afraid to take advantage of this doctrine when, if anyone is engaged in fair use, you are. And finally, because Wikipedia aims to be comprehensive, I just don't understand, I don't know how uh, Wikipedia could uh, voluntarily tie its hands and say, essentially, Certain forms of culture are off limits. Uh, certain forms of commentary are off limits. It's as if you were to say, we'll no longer use the letter E or pronouns, right? I mean, this, if you want to comprehend the world, then you have to take advantage of a doctrine like fair use in order to reference the culture that has existed until now, which is almost all uh, encumbered by copyright. Finally, defending fair use and exporting fair use abroad uh, our val those are values that I think Wikipedia should embrace and it should be at the top of your policy agenda. The trend in international copyright policy making, I'm sure uh, you probably know if you're at this very wonky copyright oriented debate, is toward more and more enforcement, right? Uh, all of the treaties, all of the, until very, very recently, the, the fair trade agreements that the U.S. is promulgating, the agreements that come out of WIPO, um, all of these agreements are, are aimed at making terms longer, making uh, defenses harder to uh, mount against copyright suits, making penalties more draconian. Uh, and if you're going to turn that tide, it's, it's very good to say no. But what you also need, frankly, is a positive agenda. Uh, if you're going to go to a body, a deliberative lawmaking body or policy making body, it's one thing, it's very good and important for you to say no, to protest things like SOPA. But the very next thing that, that that body wants to know is, so what is your positive agenda? What do you want? What do you need? Why is copyright a problem for you and how can we make it better? I think fair use is your ask. I think a flexible, open-ended doctrine like fair use is what you need to have in your pocket when you go to these deliberative bodies. Uh, fair use is a very compelling positive agenda item. It is broad, it is open, it is technology friendly, it is connected to free expression. Um, 
I think uh, it is it is a an easy ask and a big winner for you guys on the international policy uh, front. And in fact, there's good news. Uh, shocking, shockingly, uh, out of the United States trade rep recently, uh, there's actually the trade rep itself has agreed to. Uh, to put language in the latest free trade agreement, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, that encourages the creation of open uh, uh, exceptions and limitations to copyright along the lines of fair use. Um, so that, that is a worthwhile cause. I think that is an important policy ask for you guys to get behind. And I think it's a natural. And I think you have a very, very compelling legal case in the US. And you should, frankly, take advantage of it. Uh, you, can, you have your servers here. Uh, and I think this is a great, a great play to fly your flag and tell the rest of the world that this is the way things ought to be. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank you very much, Brandon. I would like to invite up Jessica Coates, the Affiliate Network Coordinator from Creative Commons International, to give her withering response <laughs> to deflect all possible uh, comers. Uh, I'm very jealous of everybody's neat little pads. I've got my old Asus EP. But, hey, there we go. Cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going to start off by saying I agree with almost with everything Brandon said. Almost. Um, of course, uh, you know I agree that uh, fair use is a great thing. Um, in you know, in many ways, it really is a fundamental part of our copyright um, system and of the copyright system here in the U.S. at least, and um, and it's very important. However, I am going to disagree with his conclusion that it is particularly well suited to Wikipedia. Um, and the point here is um, that. There are many aspects of Wikipedia that make it um, very inappropriate to use fair use. Uh, the main one, and the one that I think I represent as an Australian, is the fact that fair use doesn't apply anywhere else in the world except for the US, and possibly Israel. Um, Israel does have its own, but you know they've got their own case law that goes along with it as well. Um, so, um, but I'll go through my um, arguments leading up to this. Um, but uh, basically, yeah, um, that's my main focus is the fact that if Wikipedia really wants to be a truly international project and if it really wants to be something that is free knowledge that can be reused by others, um, the uh, fair use is not a good way to do it. So, uh, so starting off with uh, the basic premise that uh, fair use is very, very good, but uh, unlike Brandon, I do think it is very unpredictable. Um, and, uh, and this is, I, I think it's still actually fairly accepted by most of the legal scholars around the world. This is why um, people keep refusing, to, uh, not introducing fair use. Um, one of the reasons is people say it's too unpredictable compared to more specific exceptions. Um, uh, so I, again, I don't like Brandon, I don't think I'm going to go through the law. I think most people here probably have a fairly good idea. But just to make it clear for if anybody who, who's in doubt, the whole point of fair use is it's decided on a case-by-case -case, um, basis. So every single time you make a use of something, the court looks at exactly what you've done and decides whether or not it's fair um, and you know whether or not it's covered by the fair use doctrine. Um, and so basically it, it all, all depends on the exact circumstances of your particular use. It can change from one use that looks pretty much the same to another use that looks pr pretty much the same and it can certainly change depending on, on what court you get and what judge you get, what, you know, um, uh, you know, what, kind of, what circuit they're in, all those kind of things. Um, and, uh, and it certainly isn't, and, and it is very hard to predict in advance, basically. Uh, as a lawyer, you can never say to somebody, yes, this is a fair use. You can say, yes, it is highly likely this is a fair use. Yes, there is a strong argument that you have a fair use here. But you cannot say, this is a fair use, until you go to court and a judge says, yes, this is a fair use. That is the only way to know something's a fair use. So um, basically, it is very unreliable. Um, and more importantly, what the user thinks is fair, what the, uh, you know, what the person using the material thinks is fair, what the copyright owner thinks is fair, and what the court thinks is fair often do not really align very well with each other. Um, and I don't think anybody would um, argue with that. Um, I, 
though maybe not. Um, <laughs> and because of that, I mean, <laughs> this, is, this is the whole um, reason, why, one of the re main reasons why um, Wiki, um, Wikimedia in its current policies around fair use actually doesn't use the term fair use. It uses, as a friend down here pointed out, the term non-free content. One of the points behind that is because fair use, uh, it, it isn't it, quite fair use it's talking about, it's talking about non-free because fair use is a little bit uncertain. We just, we do, saying that it's definitely fair use is, um, you know, that the materials being used definitely under fair use is not actually um, very reliable. Um, anyway, so the question becomes even more complex when you start talking about downstream reuse, so the licensing of the material. Um, basically, uh, if you use something under fair use, that does not give you the right to pass it on to somebody else. That, that other person could potentially also use it under fair use. It may be that their use is very similar to yours, but their use will be judged separately. Therefore, material that's used under fair use cannot be licensed under BY or BY SA, the Wikipedian, Wikimedian standard licenses. Um, there maybe is a little bit of grey area there. Some people might argue otherwise, but certainly I think the legal uh, you know, community is fairly much in agreement on this point too. Once again, why, um, you know, they use, uh, the Wikipedia marks this content specifically, uh, uh, Wikipedia, the English Wikipedia does allow fair use of, um, to be of content on its sites, but it marks that material as non-free. Um, as in, the idea is that if you're a user, you're supposed to see that material and say, oh, I see, I can't reuse this material. It's not under buy, it's not under buy, say, it's not public domain, it's non-free content. Um, but of course, most users looking at that won't necessarily actually see that. They won't know that. Um, and uh, so having this non-free material embedded within Wikipedia really undermines the whole mission, the point of the Wikipedia, Wikicommons, all the Wiki um, products, um, that the material is free that the knowledge should be shared. And it, may, it increases the complexity, inc increases the confusion among downstream users, and increases the legal risk of those users substantially. And because it's very likely that um, many people will be confused by this. So people come to Wikipedia, or more importantly, other sites such as Wikicommons, the idea of allowing fair use material, if we're gonna say across all sites on Wikicommons, people go to there and they see this material and they think, I can use it. And they can't necessarily. Their use is different from Wikimedia's and therefore their use has to be judged separately by a court. Um, so how does this impact on the philosophy and the utility of, um, whole, of Wikimedia and all of its products if we start allowing non-free content basically to seek to pollute the free content pool that we're trying to create? Um, but most importantly, getting back to what I started with, uh, the reason why fair use is problematic is because it doesn't apply anywhere but the US. And it's great that Wikimedia has its servers here in the US and feels confident based on that to say that it is governed by US law. But A, it's, you know, courts uh, all around the world are happy to apply their law um, almost in, in any circumstances. <laughs> um, it's, you know, it's saying that a court would definitely say because the servers are based here that means that it is only US law that applies to it is very unlikely, um, basically. It's, it's, they're very likely that a court will, um, will often come up with a reason to apply its own law in certain circumstances because courts like to do that. <laughs> but um, uh, also, ignoring that, what about the user? I'm, I feel it's all very great for Wikimedia to feel like it's protected by fair use, but me as an Australian uploading this material onto Wikipedia, I don't feel particularly protected. Um, I feel like, you know, an Australian court, if I got a classic Australian literature object such as uh, the magic pudding um, and I put it up on a picture of it up on Wikipedia, um, Wikipedia, I'm pretty sure an Australian court would be pretty happy to say that I had broken Australian law or at least that I had to be judged under Australian law, which we have fair dealing, we do not have fair use as to whether or not that's legal. So once again, by having a policy that states uh, fair use material can be put up on, for instance, English language Wikipedia, um, then basically you are putting the downstream users at risk. A lot of people who, unlike me, don't know much about um, uh, copyright law will see that policy, think that they can do it, and uh, upload the material and put themselves at great risk. As Brandon said, copyright law is getting stricter, so the risk is getting stricter as well. Um, and in fact, Wikipedia itself kind of admits that in, that in their terms of use. While they have this, Wikipedia English has a particular policy about how using fair use that permits the use of fair use. Some of the others don't, some of them do. Um, but in the terms of use for all Wikimedia things, uh, products, it actually says you have to comply with your local law. So it actually 
countermands that. It's like you have this policy saying, yes, you can use fair use, but you also have to read in the context of, but only if you're complying with your own local law, which gets us back to the point that only American users can use fair use on Wikipedia. Um, anyway, <laughs> so getting to Brandon's point that, um, okay, it doesn't apply to the rest of the world, but we should be trying to export it. Again, I'm sure many people in this room agree with the idea of exporting fair use to the rest of the world. Many people might not, but um, I, it's, it's a fairly laudable aim, not something necessarily to, um, for me to, uh, that I would criticise too much. But I do not think Wikipedia is the appropriate uh, means to do so. Um, Wikimedia in general is a, the appropriate means to do so. Um, because of the risk that you're putting your users to, because you're encouraged people and all that kind of thing, basically, um, yeah, yeah it, you shouldn't be pushing the line. Wikimedia's, uh, a lot of its uh, benefit is based on the neutrality and the reputation, the solidity that it has. Um, Wikimedia shouldn't be trying to paint itself as a radical and, I hate to say it, as an American imperialistic type organisation that thinks that American law applies everywhere or should apply everywhere in the world. Um, there are very strong cultural reasons why different countries use different things. Free speech versus, like how free speech is interpreted in different countries is very different. And the idea that this particular version of uh, fair use and this particular version of human rights that you should use this stuff that applies in the US is appropriate and, you know, and that Wikipe Wikimedia as an international global organisation should be trying to argue it is appropriate for everywhere in the world is, you know, a, a fairly questionable argument and I would say not something that Wikimedia really should be saying. Uh, Creative Commons has the same issue. We have to be very careful not to be seen to be American-centric. Um, and... It's particularly, this, all of this is particularly problematic, once again, because of the users. You get down to the idea that the moment you try to be an international organisation, you start putting your users at um, risk. You start, the diversity of people you have who don't understand, uh, you know, diff the differences between copyright law, who are relying on you to help them out, uh, is, you know, is immense in, with Wikimedia. Many people will, would, you know, put fair use up material on purpose. Many people would put up because not understanding it. Many people would put, um, but many, many, many more people would put up material that is not, um, that would not be covered by fair use just because they don't understand it. And it's just impossible to kind of police that. Um, and therefore, being a large organisation such as Wikimedia requires a little bit of conservatism. Um, Individual chapters, individual users should certainly be pushing and lobbying for changes they see as appropriate in their countries. Uh, but the idea that Wikimedia as an entire organisation should make that decision for them perhaps uh, seems a little bit problematic. Uh, <laughs> even if you say that it's unlikely, unlikely that legal, uh, legal lawsuits would actually happen, that downstream users would really be caught and that you know, Wikimedians will get in trouble, um, then you really have to think about what, how this would reflect on Wikimedia um, as an organisation, its viewpoint in, um, in, on, in the international forum and, uh, and its place in society as a, free, a body of free knowledge, basically. So with that in mind, I would say that whilst we love uh, fair use and we think fair use is a great thing in appropriate circumstances, we think that Wikimedia has other alternatives. Open content uh, is um, far more appropriate and we should be trying to encourage it to grow. And that's why we should rely on it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jessica. I would now like to invite the responder for the affirmative side, Stephen Laporte, a uh, long-time Wikimedian and copyright geek who <laughs> reads about fair use and reads about Wikimedia policies for bedtime stories. <laughs> so, a quick show of hands before I begin. Um, who here has read Wikipedia's fair use policy? Is there anyone here who has? I, I guess a better question would be, who has not? Is anyone here unfamiliar with Wikipedia's fair use policies? Which Wikipedia? Yeah. Uh, English Wikipedia's fair use policies their non-free content policy. Okay, um, there's, there's a mixture in the room, but I'm gonna go over the fair use policies just to be safe. I think it's, it's important to understand precisely what we're talking about in the debate today.
So as was explained before, Wikimedia projects can develop their own policy under the exempt policy doctrine, exempt content doctrine, um, passed by the Board of Trustees, which means that each Wikimedia project has its own separate policy when it comes to fair use. Um, uh, as far as Wikipedias go, many of them do allow fair use. Uh, there are some notable exceptions, such as the Spanish Wikipedia and Spanish, the Spanish Wikipedia and the Simple English Wikipedia. Um, but the big notable one that allows fair use is the English Wikipedia. So we have two English-speaking Wikipedias, one allowing fair use and one not. Among other projects, the use of the policies that allow fair use is a little more limited. Um, Wiki News is another example. The English Wiki News is another example that has a pretty clear fair use policy. The English Wikipedia fair use policy begins with a statement of purposes, which I think highlights exactly why uh, Wikimedia projects should consider allowing fair use. First, the, the fair use policy is to support Wikipedia's mission to produce perpetually free content for unlimited distribution, modification, and application by all users and all media. So this means that the policy is motivated by a desire to make sure that content is reusable. Second, to minimize legal exposure and by limiting the amount of non-free content, using more narrowly defined criteria that apply under fair use provisions in the United States copyright law. This means that a policy should be clear in what is and is not allowed. And third, to facilitate judicious uses of non-free content to support the development of a high quality encyclopedia. And I think this highlights the fact that high quality content may sometimes depend on using content under fair use. So Wikipedia has, the English Wikipedia has written a number of situations where fair use content is allowed. Uh, there's a step-by-step -step analysis if you're going to use sound, if you're going to use an image. Uh, it's all explained in their policy. In addition to that, it requires a fair use rationale. So a user who posts content has to explain how it meets this policy. And it has to include a copyright notice tag so you can see what the copyright status of the image is. So the English Wiki News policy is somewhat similar, but achieves the same objective. First, it requires you to show that there is no uh, free image available. There's a preference for free images, but if not, a fair use image is allowed. And second, fair use is only allowed in whitelisted situations. So I think both of these policies show that it's possible to develop a situation where fair use is specifically identified and it's explained to the users who are uploading images. And second, that we're still respecting reusers. If we have an opportunity for free content, we can use that. So it's possible to have a fair use policy, but at the same time respecting reusers. Um, I'd like to respond to a few of the points made by the opposition today. First, the opposition has argued that fair use is unpredictable. Um, I, I, although fair use is decided on a case-by-case -case basis, in the United States we have a principle of stare decisis, which means we can turn to past case law and see how the court has ruled. This means that we're not totally feeling around in the dark. Whenever case law is written that establishes something as fair use, we might not know quite precisely in this situation if it is fair use, but we can have a general idea of where fair use lies. On top of case law, we have a lot of analysis from commentators and experts that has explained exactly what this means practically. Um, some experts have developed fair use guidelines that can be used in different situations, very similar to what the English Wikipedia policy does. It says if you, have a sound link, if you have a sound recording and it's being used in the background and it was recorded unintentionally during a documentary film and it's only for a few seconds, you know, perhaps that would fall underneath fair use. So we can develop similar specific policies that identify when something should and should not be allowed on English Wikipedia and, may, and take the, the, the nebulous idea of fair use and turn it to something that's much more predictable. Second, the, my opponent has argued that uh, reusers are sometimes confused about what content may be reused and what content may not. I believe this is a problem with our warnings or maybe our category system, but not necessarily a problem with fair use in general. We can identify which media has been, I, which has been labeled as under fair use by looking at the transclusions of the fair use rationale template. Uh, if we really wanted to, we could, we could create a list of content that is being used under a fair use policy on English Wikipedia and remove that from dumps so that we have a separate repository that can be reused under any circumstance and another repository that just provides the best quality content when taken at, at its entirety. But I don't believe that we should, be, we should be throwing out the baby with the bathwater. What we have is a lot of high quality content that sometimes uses fair use images such as an album art or a small clip of a, of a piece of sound that accompanies a record article on English Wikipedia. And we don't need to worry about the reuser's confusion as a, the primary reason behind a fair use policy. 
And finally, the problems with jurisdiction are not something that are just uh, here with fair use. It applies to every area of the law. It's really complicated to determine what law applies in what situation. But luckily, we do have some uh, processes that are trying to harmonize copyright law. Uh, the, my, my partner in this debate has mentioned that the Trans-Pacific Partnership has a section in it that's modeled after the TRIPS agreement. And these, uh, these provisions are very vague and high level. They say basically, uh, in these circumstances, you're allowed to create an exemption. Fall use fares under, falls underneath that. If we want to truly harmonize copyright principles, something similar to fair use, we're going to have to do that ourselves. We're going to have to look at the law, see how it how it varies from different jurisdictions. While a European country might not have a, do a doctrine of fair use, it does have specific exemptions for quotations or uh, news reporting or uh, similar fair, fair dealing uh, statutes or case law. And uh, with analysis of that case law, we can combine them and create a copyright policy that respects the, uh, every jurisdiction or at least makes uh, the maximum amount of information for our users as they use our site. But underlying all three of these uh, arguments, I believe that I need that there are two important reasons why we should be uh, we should be allowing fair use. First, there are situations where fair use will produce the highest quality content, and second, I believe it's important that we stand up for this principle that's inside our copyright law. First, in some situations, the fair use is the is the best way to serve our visitors. We're trying to serve the highest quality encyclopedia, the highest quality dictionary, or the highest quality repository of images. And, and these pieces may sometimes require us to use fair use content. All of our, uh, do, all of our policies on various projects uh, have us prioritize something that is not that is available under a free license or in the public domain. But if that's not available, then should we sacrifice the highest quality content to preserve the freedom of reusers? Or should we try and find some middle ground that allows us to respect reusers, but at the same time uh, serve album art or a small clip of sound? When I, when I checked the transclusion count on the English Wikipedia's fair use uh, rationale template, there were over 300,000 images. So that, that show on the English Wikipedia, that shows you the scale of fair use on English Wikipedia. It's being used very broadly, and it's being used with a rationale. These are users entering in how something falls underneath fair use. They're performing the analysis on their own. And we have documentation of why they think this is fair use. So if a reuser plans to use an image in the exact same way, they can see, does this rationale match up to what I'm doing? Second, I believe that uh, fair use is an important component of our copyright law. Fair, uh, when parties have raised First Amendment uh, arguments against uh, copyright law in past cases, the courts have ruled that fair use is what protects our free expression inside of copyright law. That means that fair use and free expression are linked together in our analysis of copyright law, and we can't ignore fair use without also limiting our ability to express ourselves freely. We need to stand up for the doctrines that we do have. If fair use is decided on a case-by-case -case basis, then we need to be willing to look at the cases that we do have and find out exactly where the law lies. If we shy away from it entirely, then we're missing out on our ability to express ourselves. And we're, we're standing up for fair use. We're not only standing up for our own projects, but we're standing up for all like-minded institutions that also depend on fair use, such as libraries and archives, and documentary filmmakers, and all the other people that uh, must make complicated fair use analyses, sometimes without an attorney. And they do this with the help of guides, best practice guides that have been written by experts. And when we create fair use policies, we shouldn't only be looking to how we're guiding our own users to comply with fair use, but how we can guide other institutions on what exactly fair use is, how we can create a clearer fair use for other users down the road. Because after all, all of our policies are released under a Creative Commons license, so anyone's free to reproduce and distribute our policies as well. So I hope that we can, as a community, and through the wiki spirit of iteration, create policies that maximize free expression and help us comply with the copyright law better. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thus concludes the all or affirmative team. Now uh, I would like to introduce and bring up to the stage Lennart Gulbranson from Sweden and the Swedish Wikipedia, user Hannibal, and longtime outreach uh, coordinator and a general nice guy. <laughs> Okay, thank you for bringing me here. Uh, it's a delight to be here. 
I'd like to start with uh, a few polls on my own. Um, how many in the panel here are active on any other Wikipedia except English Wikipedia? Ooh, that's an astounding silence, isn't there? Um, I'm, I'm a neutral bubble. I, I have no stake in this. Yes. And how many in the panel are living outside of the US? <laughs> right. So I feel like I'm representing sort of like the 66, 6.6 billion people living outside of the US here. <laughs> I also feel that I am representing the somewhere around uh, 14 million articles that are not on English Wikipedia and uh, which don't have the exem exemption doctrine policies. Uh, so as my colleague said here, here um, there is a risk for Wikipedians there is a definite risk of Wikipedians. Uh, there was a session previously where a guy told me, uh, told the whole auditorium that he's been in several lawsuits um, for just for uh, adding stuff to Wikipedia and it's not without its dangers. And I think that if you are in a French court or in a Swedish court or in any other court except the US court, there's no real telling where the verdict is going to be. So then the question becomes, um, how do we do this uh, to, to make it um, a successful one? Well, we need more patrolling, don't we? As my opponent said here, um, there is over 300,000 uh, fair use images on English Wikipedia. Uh, with a rationale and I, of course many of them are weeded out uh, and many are added annually but I know for a fact that some of them are used um, without real background checking there are possibly other images that could be used but more importantly and this is where I can speak from personal experience I, I do a lot of uh, outreach to uh, galleries, libraries, archives, museums, schools, uh, and of course the media, the organizations for genealogists and, uh, and various other NGOs, uh, government agencies and, and other organizations. And it's very hard for me to convince them that we need free images when they can just go to Wikipedia and say, but you already have those images. Mm -hmm. And by the way, some of them are stolen. <laughs> so another way to look at this is, are there alternatives to free use? And of course there are. Um, you could have no images at all which is a great way to say to um, people that we need free images. There are uh, on uh, uh, the um, Netherlands Wikipedia, there they have, uh, when, when it comes to bi um, biographies of people, they have this symbol. If you have a free image of this person, you could add it to the article, which is a great way of of uh, convincing people to donate their pictures. There, there are even more uh, alternatives. If you go for, to German Wikipedia, for instance, and you go to the article about, uh, Andy Warhol's article about the Campbell soup can. Do you know the picture? Mm -hmm. The Campbell soup can? And of course, since uh, Warhol lived for a very long time and hasn't been dead for, 70 years or, or more, uh, which would place it into the public domain in uh, Germany, they have no way to include this in the article. 
but they do in a way because they include a template with a link to the museum that has the original painting, which means that the GLAMs, or uh, galleries, libraries, archives, and museums that has the originals become very happy and want to cooperate with Wikipedia more. So I think this is a definite argument uh, to use these kinds of links instead of stealing material, which is what we are talking about here. So I go to a lot of uh, places where I talk to normal people, people who don't use Wikipedia, and there's many great stories to talk about there, but one thing that I, uh, I take with me from those moments are, uh, and the, this is perhaps difficult for you to understand, but understanding Wikipedia is very, very hard. And I, I'll just give you one example that you all are familiar with. Wikipedia, Wikimedia. <laughs> Why? Why? <laughs> Another example is, okay, so it's a free encyclopedia. Does it mean that you get it for free? We normally say, no, it's not free as in beer. It's free as in freedom of, uh, um, um, I'm sorry, um, free, free speech. Yes, thank you. And so it's good to collaborate. Um, so uh, it's very difficult for them to understand the concept of free licenses. And then we want to confuse them even more by saying, well, you can download the entire Wikipedia. You could use it for whatever purpose you want, except these 300,000 images. <laughs> We're not going to tell you where they are. <laughs> So, um, I don't know if you've heard the veganism parable. This is a great story. Uh, so, imagine you're a vegan and you go to a party, uh, which is a vegan party, and, and people are vegans there, there are no meat eaters, meat eaters there, and the first cor course that are set on the table is fried chicken. <laughs> and you go, Wait a minute, wasn't this supposed to be a vegan meal? Oh, but, oh, that's, it's not so much, and we only use it for, for some people. And, okay, so, um, right? It, and this is the same thing. We want Wikipedia to be a vegan meal. We want it to be something that everybody can use. <laughs> And I am forced, I believe, to remind people of the vision that Jimmy Wales had. Imagine a world in which every person on the planet is given free access to the sum of human knowledge, right? There's no except the 300,000 images that we are too lazy to find free, exam free uh, alternatives to, is there? <laughs> and I don't think that it should be something like that. So, and there are many arguments that the other, other side has brought up. Um, one of them is that, oh, we, but we uh, discuss which images uh, have a, a, we have a rationale for using them. I don't know if you've tried to discuss about something on Wikipedia. How hard is there to get a consensus on anything? Impossible, Impossible right? And things change, so the rationale is really only a temporal rationale, right? So um, the other thing that I want to um, address is that uh, people couldn't simply click on the image to s find out if this image is free to reuse. What? In all the time I've been active as a Wikimedian, I've never heard of a person who voluntarily or 
without any help from, from outsiders, clicked on an image, scrolled down, read the, this long of a summary of what the image is, and then scrolled down even more to find out that there's a license there and understood the license. I've never met such a person, and I've even, I've even had a hard time finding people who locate the categories. So even if we place all the non-free images uh, in a special category and we use that to exclude them sometimes, people won't use it because they don't know about it. Because let's face it, how many even find the edit button? And we tell people about the edit button. Yes. So um, that's my argument. Thank you. <laughs> So we have some time for questions now of, of our panel. Are those microphones on? Or could we have them? Yes? At least one is. They're both up. Okay. So um, there are microphones at the front sides, or the front of the, uh, both aisles. If anyone would like to come down and ask questions of any individual or of the entire panel to help make up their minds. Gideon. Okay. So uh, let's just get one things straight. We're, we're staying in character, right? You are staying yes. in character. <laughs> <laughs> okay, name's Gideon, username is Nangara, both EN and Commons. For those that are against the um, fair use doctrine, how do you address freedom of panorama, pornographic images, religious icons, where we do default US law? When you upload, you're protected by, well, said to be US law. I know Freedom Panorama is a bit more greyer, but we choose to put Muslim images up, other religious icons, which in other countries aren't legal, and we encourage people to do it. So I would, I would say that if we allow for fair use images also, except for, uh, on top of the Problem with, problems with freedom of panorama, which is a real problem, uh, and where we're actively trying to solve the problem by showing, for instance, through contests like uh, Wikilove's Monuments and Wikilove's Public Art, which is going to be a thing next year, um, we're actually showing the governments that it would be a benefit to them to change the copyright law. On top of this, if we would have fair use images, I believe that we would make it even more difficult to, to show them the real benefit of having free images. But why wouldn't the license be? I'm the sorry? Primary, why wouldn't the license of such images be solely based on the location they were taken or they were sourced from rather than having a generic license? You put them under, under a Creative Commons 3.0, which is unported and can be challenged in any jurisdiction. I'm sorry. Well, I, like, I, I, I don't know for sure exactly what uh, attitude and what policy it's taken, but I'm willing to bet, and I don't know all the laws around the world about uh, freedom of panorama, but I'm also willing to bet that most of them probably don't let you put it under a Creative Commons by licence. So but that I'm is sure. what they do on Commons. But we'll leave it there because I want to go on to the other side of the equation. Would, you, would the other team like to respond to that question or are you happy to let that? Okay. <laughs> Just the other thank you. <laughs> oh, follow up question under the non free content usage how do we know in a situation where it's an anyone can edit environment that the actual non free content policy is legal how do we know that if we use that policy to upload something that we're actually complying with the required case laws and stuff that you're talking about well i mean everyone's responsible for obeying the law right and it, that's the same problem you have when you refer to any policy on a wiki. We, we have to, you look at the revision history, you see who edited it, um, and you know, you, it's a great place to start your research, but if you have any doubts, you should probably research elsewhere. And there are experts you can turn to who have published material, but any of them are also gonna tell you they can't give you legal advice without knowing the specifics of your circumstance. And that's so. the situation. If you can't give legal advice, how can you say that this yeah. and, can actually be used? 
and that, that's that's the case whenever you're trying to comply with the law. You just you do the best you can. Yeah. So you still leave the end user open to, or the end the supplier open to prosecution because you can't guarantee. That you're always open to prosecution. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. Like you're open to prosecution <laughs> right now for talking to me. <laughs> and um, uh, and I would so, say our colleagues have made a point for us. <laughs> <laughs> no, so. I mean, you know, you, you take your chances all the time, right? If you are speaking in public about a, another human, they, that human might be upset about what you say. They could sue you. You won't know whether you're going to win in the lawsuit, you know, whether they have it, – it, it might not even matter whether they have a decent case. They can still get you into court, give you a headache. And so there is some level of risk that you're agreeing to when you speak in a public forum. And so, you know, the, especially the idea when you're that representing you can, points of view that are not necessarily your own. <laughs> right, right. So there's, the, it, it, you should not. The standard should not be zero risk because in that case you should sort of just lock yourself in a room. But um, another thing that I wanted to suggest is there have been a couple of mentions of codes of best practice in fair use, and those are, uh, those have been extraordinarily successful. They've been developed by communities. Uh, of practice in all different areas, um, but largely around scholarship and the kinds of things that you guys do. And I would strongly suggest to you that this community consider working on a kind of code process where you uh, do an intense uh, look at the law, look at your community values, and put together uh, some, some uh, principles that could help you determine these repeating situations. Because I, I swear to God, you guys, you're at the heart of the doctrine. I mean, what you do, if anything is fair, then what you do is fair. And so you should uh, try and, and uh, just put up some sandbags around yourself. We have a question from the other from the other aisle. He, I thought he was going to. Yeah, I was going to say, but think of the downstream users. So we can't just say, well, Wikipedia can use it. You can't. Second question. Yes, um, there, there was talk on the the uh, against side about two concepts. First of all, the Jimbo Whale's objective of free access to, you know, the sum of human knowledge. Um, but then you also talked about um, the, the, the idea that Wikipedia needs to be neutral and that we're seen as neutral and that's where credibility comes from. But d doesn't the whole idea of free access to the sum of human knowledge, it's not, not just a subset of human knowledge, doesn't, isn't that unneutral? And if we are going to be non-neutral about something, uh, biased on something, I mean, it, it, it just seems to me that that, that would be it. That, that statement, free access, implies, you know, an opinion on that subject, on, on this sort of subject of whether or not you can use something. And I'd appreciate your comment. I'd like to hear from the negative team first. Have you heard about Wikipedia Zero? I've not. Uh, this is a great program to bring Wikipedia to underprivileged countries in the um, in India and other. Um, in other Asia countries and, and Africa through uh, mobile use. And it's a very cool project. You should talk to Cool uh, about it. He's, uh, I wonder if he's here, but otherwise I'm sure there are some Wikim Wikimedia Foundation people that can tell you about it. I think that is probably a smarter way to go when it comes to increasing the use of, gi or giving more people free access to the sum of Hugh knowledge rather than um, adding more fair use uh, images. And I would say, I would certainly say that Wiki um, Media uh, as an organisation could um, make a decision to take a stand on these, you know, to have policy positions on these points as far as lobbying, trying to encourage, um, all that kind of thing. It's just about what level of risk are you taking with your users and with the and and how are you compromising the um, uh, the products themselves? If you decide that you're not just going to put, argue that fair use should apply everywhere in the world, but you're going to pretend that it does, in a way that it doesn't. And the affirmative, would you like to say anything? Or? I just want to say it sounds like the slogan is right: free access to all of the world's knowledge. And it sounds like the negative's policy is access to all of the world's free knowledge. That mm. seems unusual. To me. <laughs> We have Let's jump in really quick to that. Um, <laughs> Sage Ross. So the, so the question then that I would put is, is sort of the most expansive fair use policy that you can imagine, is that enough to achieve the goal of allowing every person to freely share in the sum 
of all knowledge. Mm. Is, if, is unlimited fair use enough to achieve that? Mm. Negative um, or no, affirmative? <laughs> yeah, probably not. It's, it's always <laughs> gonna be a balancing act, right? The, if, if you disobey copyright law and then end up in prison, you can't share free knowledge, right? So you're gonna have to find out what you're able to do, what the law says, and just find your position on that balance. But it's always gonna be a balancing act. You can also say, I mean, copyright makes a distinction between uh, facts and expression, uh, right? And so what copyright is supposed to protect is not facts and knowledge, but the individual expression of those things by a particular creator. And so fair use, the point of fair use is to do precisely what you described, that is to separate out access in the form of access to knowledge and ideas from the protection that copyright gives to the particular expression of the author. And so, in my view, the broadest possible and the best possible fair use analysis would indeed accomplish this idea of access to knowledge. Now, does that mean that you could listen to every song ever written all the way through for fun any way you want? Probably not, right? Because that's, then you're getting into access for expressive purposes and not for, no, for, for purely the knowledge purpose. But again, if what you're doing is, for example, writing a, uh, an article about uh, copyright in music and you want to talk about the George Harrison, My Sweet Lord versus He's So Fine, how can you write that article without including bits of those songs? And fair use is there to do that. And including those bits of those songs is part of, of telling the story of that knowledge without having to take full advantage of all the expressiveness that copyright protects. And for the negative? I mean, the Supreme Court has, pretty, has ruled that the idea-expression dichotomy, what he's, what he's discussing, and fair use go hand in hand in protecting free expression. For the negative? So, those, those I just don't believe in that dichotomy. <laughs> but I, I mean, it's important <laughs> to look at both of those areas. So I, I'm trying not to keep it short here, but in the George Harrison thing, I, I believe I gave several different alternatives to actually including them in the article, one of which is, is an example from the German Wikipedia. You could link to, for instance, YouTube or any site that has it and, and let them take the risk, so to speak. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that Wikipedia has five pillars. Are you, are you familiar, familiar with all five pillars of Wikipedia? Let's shout, count them down together, shall we? <laughs> so Wikipedia is an encyclopedia. <laughs> yes, Wikipedia is neutral. Wikipedia is free. Wikipedians are nice to each other. And the fifth one, anyone? Ignore our rules. Ignore our rules. There's a, so um, just a bit of trivia, the German Wikipedia only has four. <laughs> so so, um, so, uh, my, <laughs> so my point is that it's probably a good idea to ignore rules once in a while, but let's keep in mind the first one, Wikipedia Encyclopedia, and we want to make it as efficient as possible. Are fair use images the most, um, the most effective way to make a good encyclopedia? And I'm arguing that it's not because it makes it harder to find free images that others can share also. Thank you. Is it an encyclopedia or a, a compendium of free things for people to reuse? That's the third pillar, which is Wikipedia's free content. All content free for all purposes all the time. Okay. I, 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 we lose. <laughs> we will uh, have to Just keep kidding. the the questions short. There was the question was here. No, you okay? Um, so we have three queued. But, um, okay. Please ask short questions and give short responses. Okay, um, I fine. would call myself a fair use maximalist, but I'm concerned about and can think about what that means. Uh, I am concerned, though, about fair use uh, being used throughout Wikimedia projects because of the truism that if you don't exercise fair use, then it gets diminished. And uh, used in the, con trying to develop rules to increase certainty would 
would mean that non-adventurous uses were, were made. So I'm concerned about uh, Wikimedia projects as being the right venue to push fair use. I think something like ubu.com um, is a better venue. Is that a question or a statement? It's a question. Um, Sorry, I didn't phrase it. <laughs> I, I'd like, I, I have something to add to Mike's um, comment, which is, uh, Yes, I actually was thinking, and I didn't think the same. I think in response to your idea of uh, like you, you have to show, you have to include fair use to show people why we need fair use. I would actually say it's the other way around. It's like the SOPA blackout. We have to not include the images to show people why we need them to be free, like why we need fair use to apply in other countries, why we need uh, you know better laws about reusing material, and that's similar to Mike's thing. If you uh, you know, if you push the limit too much, then people will just say, well, you look, you're doing it anyway. Why bother even changing the law? It was actually illegal in Australia to record a television show um, for your own personal use for 20 years. <laughs> 20 years, because nobody was ever going to sue you. Why even bother changing the law? There you go. Anybody? Sorry. You go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think they've Fair given up. <laughs> Question? Uh, so I, uh, I think it's really an enormously imperfect world and an extraordinarily imperfect copyright law. And I'm really stunned and amazed that Wikipedia exists under the circumstances of the laws that we live under. I just wanted to, I, I'm somebody who has worked with a variety of communities around creating their codes of best practices and fair use. And I, I thought that as, as the Wikimedians think about this issue, they might be interested in examples of two communities that have are committed to open access and, and free material that have had to come to terms with this because they didn't, they eventually decided that they did not like not being able to make stuff more than they wanted to make sure that their stuff was infinitely reusable. And one of them is the people who make open courseware, you know, Stanford, MIT, all those people. And what they discovered was that they were so, um, their courses were turning into what they called skeletons or Swiss cheese courses, courses that, they, that had bare bones but no actual content because so much of the content was copyrighted. And they made a decision that for them was extraordinarily difficult given that they circulate their materials worldwide, which was that in some circumstances they would label, and their labeling is really interesting, they would label fairly used material. I actually have a few copies of that report here on their own code. Uh, and they, they are people who came to that decision very, very reluctantly, but the solution that they came to, to under some circumstances use fair use, enabled them to put up dozens and dozens and dozens of courses for access worldwide and admittedly all that fairly used material was, is only available on a consumer basis in other countries unless those other countries' laws allow them to use that material. And so that's one example. The other example is the code that, that Brandon Butler work, worked on, the librarian's code, on um, uh, uh, code of best practices and fair use for academic and research libraries. Librarians in, in the US are an extraordinarily committed open access community. They want free material for everyone. They really hate having to limit their patrons' access, but they finally came to um, uh, and understanding that they couldn't do some of the, they couldn't serve their f patrons in a fundamental way. Their mission would be crippled fundamentally. So I guess that's the question that's really at stake here is, is what's, I, and I guess I think the way that Brandon put it is interesting. What is it that, what is the, the real mission here? Is the real mission here to get this information, to give people this access to, to the world's knowledge, or is it to give people access to only the knowledge that you can uh, uh, create or provide freely. Thank you very much. I don't think that was a here, question. Here, here. Here, here? Okay. And nay, nay, probably. All right. I invoke my Wikipedian fifth pillar rights. Um, I invoke my fifth pillar rights. <laughs> suppose that... I take the fifth. <laughs> suppose that I take your analogy and turn it on its head, and you serve me a plate of appetizing broccoli, let's say, only I'm a meat eater. And not only would fried chicken satisfy me, but something innately cruel that would be offensive to vegetarians, such as, I don't know, foie gras or veal. 
would be what satisfies me. And instead of serving me as a proper host, you tell me, go down to the street to the pornography brokering library because we know for a fact that they have your fried chicken and they have foie gras and they have all manner of cruelly murdered animal. Wouldn't I then transfer my goodwill and possibly my purse strings over to the library instead of to say, Jimmy Wales, who wants my donation to perpetuate Wikimedia. Um, and please do explain how this is better in the event that you shuffled off your responsibility to another sister organization. If having larger resources for archival purposes that might be safer on Wikimedia Commons for perpetuity purposes, because your servers aren't black, based in Nigeria and down 12 hours a day, like the rightful copyright owners might be. Uh, Lenart, I think that's a question for you. You think so? Gladly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that we need a wiki jokes, don't you? <laughs> and we need wiki cars, and we need a thousand other projects, and that's Wikia. Yeah. yeah, it's Wikia, right? Yeah, <laughs> and so uh, some of them are allowing uh, fair use images, and and Wikipedia is not, and there's a reason for that. We want people to be able to reuse the material freely. We want them to be able to to sell copies of Wikipedia. And, Wikipedia in, in countries where they don't necessarily have internet access. So I, I think that by saying that on a vegan dinner, which is what we were talking about, uh, if you were demanded to have meat, you've gone to the wrong place. You could go to <laughs> Ikea. And, and from the affirmative? Well, oh, well, I, I have one thing to add to that, which is also, uh, in certain circumstances, like, what if, uh, you know, basically your restaurant here has decided to only provide broccoli on the basis that, uh, you know, uh, half the time people die when they eat meat. And you can insist on eating meat, but your restaurant is not actually willing to take that level of risk. Like, like it doesn't want to take responsibility for you eating that meat and therefore <laughs> dying, or at least being no. put in jail. Um, well, maybe being fine. And for the affirmative? <laughs> no one's ever died from fair use. <laughs> oh, I believe. Yeah. Oh, that's, yeah. that's a great point. <laughs> <laughs> the way copyright law is going. <laughs> oh, that's right. Um, there are some fines that I'd rather just be killed than be um, Well, I think, I mean, Wikipedia, ha by the pedia part of Wikipedia, to my mind, holds itself out as being an encyclopedia. It, it, it's everything. It's got to talk about everything, and some of that culture is encumbered. And I just don't understand. Uh, you know, it's sort of like you know, putting you know, operating a McDonald's, getting a McDonald's franchise, and then when people get in, telling them it's broccoli or nothing. Uh, you guys are operating a McDonald's franchise. I hate to tell you because you've got Wikipedia in your name. People expect you to be an encyclopedia. They expect you to talk about George Harrison. There's an entry about George Harrison. Yeah. Some of that stuff is encumbered. Um, so I think, I think the false advertising problem is, is a problem for the negative. We'll have one more question and then I will ask you in the remaining two minutes to, in a sentence, summarise why people should vote for your, your side. So last question. Okay, uh, I'm sorry, I'm French, so... Uh, <laughs> I, I'm okay. You can sit uh, down again um, now, that's all. I just, I don't, I, okay. I just <laughs> don't understand from the panel how I can use fair use um, because I'm allowed to edit on than Wikipedia, which is not US Wikipedia, um, without uh, committing a crime, no, well, without uh, violating copyright uh, in France. Um, and that's, uh, I think, really complex, uh, because copyrights were made for publishing when uh, things were printed and not uh, online uh, for everyone. So just, I, d I just don't understand what I, which law I can use. and what I can do. For the uh, affirmative? <laughs> I don't deal with multi-jurisdictional issues as much. I might, uh, Which is our point. Yeah, no, hey. <laughs> yeah, I, I, 
from, from the um, negative, I'm just going to say I think you just made a point for us. Uh, and, and I think, um, getting back to the point that was made at the beginning, I think at the moment uh, French language Wikipedia almost certainly doesn't allow material to be used under fair use for that exact point. And the premise of the debate is that all should use it or none. So. Well, I mean, I, I don't know French law specifically, but there is probably an exception for a quotation uh, for news reporting, uh, European law has these copyright exceptions built in. They're, they work differently than fair use. Yes, uh, just for the exception for quotation, for example, six seconds of a, of a music is not a quotation, it's too long. It, well, so I guess we need to find a way to create policies that maximize what we can do um, under all these jurisdictions, but it, it's gonna be a complicated question. I should point out that the Swedish Wikipedia is, as far as I'm aware, the only Wikipedia that also treats the Wikipedia logo as copyrighted and therefore doesn't include the fair use of the Wikipedia logo in the Swedish Wikipedia article about Wikipedia. <laughs> We're we hardcore. <laughs> <laughs> we should talk. <laughs> so um, I would like the, the, the four members of the panel to, in a sentence each, justify why people should vote for you, recalling that the question is all Wikipedia, all languages of Wikipedia should be having the same policy, either allowing fair use or not. Of course, if it's not, that means English Wikipedia has to remove a whole bunch of things. And if it is all, then the other languages get access to a whole bunch of stuff that might not be allowed in other countries. In a sentence, I would say, that fair use is extraordinarily valuable, that uh, an extraordinarily valuable principle that can and should be encouraged around the world, and that it is a risk worth taking for Wikipedia and for Wikipedians to stand up for that value rather than to opt out of the culture business. And for the, uh, Jess? Oh, me? Oh, sorry. Go in the same order that you presented. Uh -huh. um, in that case, I, I would say that uh, whilst fair use is uh, a wonderful thing in the US copyright system, um, we shouldn't pretend that it also applies in the rest of the world um, and uh, we can choose to encourage the introduction of it around the world as much as we like but we shouldn't put our users at, u at risk and the whole premise of Wikimedia at, oh, yeah, Wikimedia at risk um, for the sake of uh, you know, for, yeah, for the sake, of, yeah, yeah, we just shouldn't put it at risk, um, uh, but because we're pretending that the world is not a world, uh, what it is, basically. Stephen? I think we can find some middle ground, I say be bold. <laughs> and, uh, Lenart? I think our general counsel, Jeff Brigham here, has only 40 hours a week to work on this, and he would have a lot more work if he was to go around the world and save everybody that could be, could be possibly uh, fined or put in jail for using fair use images in other countries. So for Jeff. Yeah. <laughs> So if I could uh, ask for a show of hands for all of those who would vote for all Wikipedias should allow fair use. Please raise your hands high. <laughs> 21. And none. <laughs> All Wikipedias should apparently allow fair use. Who, I, I'm, I'm a little bit uh, um, curious. Who changed? Did any? Yes. Who who changed their minds? Could, could we have a raise of hands for anybody who changed? Yeah. Say again. Yeah. Some people changed. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Cool. Cool. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you very much for your time. How many people work on other language Wikipedias here? <laughs>